Now if you are from a Indo-European, Turkic, Hungarian, or a Mongolian ethnos, then I guarantee you, you had multiple ancestors who roamed the Eurasian steppe. Picture these ancestors for me now, will you? Uh, the grass beneath their feet, God's sky above them, eight million meters of the same open grassland uh, from east to west. Your ancestors probably had the privilege of walking from China to Hungary multiple times in their lifetime, surrounded by a tribe that would have known them better than any community in your life will ever know you. <laughs> Not me though, all my, answers at, am, all my ancestors at the time were Jewish slaves in Egypt. You can uh, clearly deduct this from my blue eyes. Now, I just talked about ethnicities and about living in nature at the same time. Was I just then crafting some kind of anachronism for you? No, I don't really think I was, because to me, a nation is something that has existed before the sins of living in civilization. We as human beings have, or at least had, our roles to fulfill in nature. And these niches could only be facilitated through tr communities, you know, we're social creatures. And what is the more fundamental OG community than the tribe? Now, tribes, like any community, can be diverse. Uh, but they can only become diverse through war, intermarriages, alliances, you know, the stuff that tribal confederacies do. The political unit of tribes cooperating. Uh, for me, that's, that's what makes a nation. It's a community of communities. Like, I should be able to name everyone in my community under my own standards. Like, I could go memorize the names of everyone at my synagogue right now. It would take me an hour or two. Um, but if I want to go memorize the names of everyone in the Jewish community, in, in the Jewish nation, it would take me, uh, a whole lifetime, so I better get started. Um, but now back to the steppes. Uh, when the Hungarians first came down into the Ukrainian steppe, they weren't an ethnically homogenous group of Uralic tribal people. They were Uralic tribes on horseback mixed in with Slavic tribes on horseback, Turkic tribes on horseback, and these weren't perversions to the Hungarian identity. The Hungarian identity was created through this alliance of different peoples. Uh, that's what made a national unit, was all these Eurasian steppe nomads kind of working together, moving together. Now let's contrast that to the Han Chinese. You know, in the Middle Ages, at this point, the first few dynasties of China had really just utilized the Han Chinese national identity as kind of an in-group for their state. This is not factual at all, I'm making this stuff up. And um, that wherever Chinese identity went was mainly where the kind of agricultural projects that these Chinese dynasties uh, wanted to sponsor went. This isn't, of course, the case for the last few thousand years with diasporas and with, you know, the consolidation of nation states and all that stuff, but let's go back just, just for the Middle Ages. Let me ask a deeply reactionary question, which is, which is the better nation? Hungarian medieval nomads or Chinese medieval farmers? And I'm not talking about which is the better culture, both are pretty keyed, but if you're trying to explain what a nation is to an alien, and you need an example, what are you going to go for? Nomads riding together, or farmers collaborating under a state.